Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this class of Microsoft Office Suite. My name is Amambo Msuti, and I'll be taking you in this course. Throughout this course of Microsoft Office Suite, we shall look at five applications. These five Microsoft applications are Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Publisher, and Microsoft Outlook. We'll look at each and every one of these applications and see how to use them and how we can, uh, they can make our lives easier. However, for today, we shall focus on Microsoft Word as it's the first application that we are going to look at. The key purpose of Microsoft Word is to type and save documents. This is where we type documents, edit documents, style documents, and save our documents. So Microsoft Word is, the core purpose of Microsoft Word is document creation. So let us look at how Microsoft Word looks like and let us try and familiarize ourselves with the Microsoft Word interface. I'm using Microsoft Word 16. It doesn't matter which version you have. You could have uh, 10, you could have 19, 16, 360, Office Suite. It doesn't matter. Most of the core or key functions are the same depending on, on, on which uh, uh, version that you're using. So it doesn't matter if it's not 16 that you're using. So when you open Microsoft Word, this is the first thing that comes. We have templates that are pre-designed or created for us by the application. We can utilize these templates if we want to use Microsoft Word for any of the purpose that is in line with the template. Take for example, want to create a calendar, we can just import this template and edit it. So for now, Let's focus on a blank document and familiarize ourselves with the interface and how to use it. Then we can look at issues of templates later on. This is how the interface of Microsoft Word looks like. Beginning here from the top uh, left corner, we have what we call our quick access tools. These are the buttons that are more likely on speed dial due to lack of uh, better terms. On my quick access uh, toolbar here, I have the save button the undo button and the redo button. You can change which buttons should fall here depending on your preference by clicking on the arrow down here and ticking which option you want to be on your quick access toolbar. For me, there's only redo, undo and save. And you can edit, you can remove and add according to the options that you are given. Below the quick access toolbar, we have what we call ribbons. Here where we have the home, the insert, the design, all the way until view. These are called ribbons. So under each of these ribbons, we have different options. So for instance, under the home ribbon, we have the clipboard options, we have the font options, which are above here. We have the paragraph options and we have the styles option and editing and so on and so forth. So you realize that if I click on the next ribbon, which is insert, there'll be a different set of options that actually commensurate with the insert ribbon. So if I click on insert, you see that all the options under uh, insert have changed. Here we have the pages, we have the tables, illustrations, and so on and so forth. So in a short while, we shall look at each and every component that's under the ribbon and just try and see how what may be useful to us. Here on this blank white space, it's called the document window. This is where the typing occurs. This is where we type whatever we want to type. If I want to type my name, this way I can type whatever sentences I can say. My name is Mambo, for instance. This is where we type anything that we want to type. Like we said, the core purpose of Microsoft Word is to type and save documents. So this is where the typing occurs. On the left-hand side of this document, we have this ruler here, which is called the vertical ruler. The vertical ruler's purpose is just to, for you to set the margin of this blank page. If you want to start typing from the top of the page, you can drag up to where you want to start from or down. So you set the margins of the page from top to bottom. And here, this is the horizontal ruler where you set the margins of your page from left to right. Below here is what we call the page information. This is uh, the document information. It shows you what information which is on this document. So for instance, for this right now is page one of one. We only have one page and this is a page we're on. We've not typed any words, so we have zero words. 
we are typing in uh, English uh, and the English are using is the United Kingdom English so this is where you have uh, your page or your document information so basically these are the most key parts that you need to know about the layout of Microsoft uh, Office so now how do we use Microsoft Office so like I mentioned earlier on the purpose of Microsoft Office is to type and save documents now it's not only to type after you type the documents you can style them you can edit them you can change the color you can write the document in any way that you want or in any way that pleases you and we'll just look at some functions that will be useful when you are doing that so to start with allow me to open a, a document that we're going to use rather than start typing from scratch due to lack of time we'll just use a document that has already typed data that we can use to okay can find this okay we say open uh, let's go to our document the bottom here we have our letter to Jane we are going to use this letter to Jane as an example to see how we can carry out various functions in Microsoft Word so this is a simple letter that was written by Max Max wrote this letter to his friend who's called Jane and the letter content is here below now like I said we will look at what falls under each ribbon maybe before we start the illustrations let me just explain each ribbon and show you what is associated under each ribbon. Under the home ribbon, we have the clipboard here. We have the font. Under the font, this is where you change the handwriting of uh, these words here. You change the size, you change the casing, you change the colors. If you want it to be bold, italic, all these fall under font. Under paragraphs here is where you stipulate how you want the paragraphs to be. You want them to be inside you want them to be outside do you want to have bullets do, do you want to highlight something do you want to have borders everything falls under paragraphs how you want the paragraphs to be and under style is what kind of style is the page going to have so if i drop down the style menu here you see we have different styles we have the normal style which is just black and white we have the no uh, the heading style where we have a heading and things under subheadings and so on and so forth so this is what's contained under the home ribbon under the insert ribbons this way you can insert a page you can insert a table if you want to put in a table here's where you can manually insert a table by adding columns and rows or if you want you can just write the number of columns and rows if you have to insert your tables if you want to insert a picture you can insert pictures here we can insert pictures uh, from the internet if we have an internet connection we can insert shapes as well whatever shape this is a square this is a line a circle and so on and so forth and other variety of shapes that we can insert in this document we have our charts we have screenshots and so on and our uh, comments if, if the page has got comments we can view our comments from here we can add our comments from here we can go to word art this is where we change the acting of the words how they how want the words to look they can all be in this form and it's up to us to play around with these things and see how best we can use them under design is the general design of the page so as you've seen here if i drop down this menu there are various designs where we have the title here and the heading under every every uh, title or every uh, design has got its own pros and cons and you can choose whichever design is most applicable to you under layout this will change the settings of the page or the page layout for example i mentioned that the rulers here are for the margins which you can adjust manually when you click under margins you can adjust them automatically by choosing how narrow you want it to be so in case you don't want to adjust manually you can use the auto the orientation this page by default is in portrait but you can change it to landscape if you want it to be in landscape by clicking landscape and the page will change to landscape so this way you change the page orientation the size and the columns if you want this to be in one column like it is right now if you want it to be in two or more columns so for instance if i put two columns you see that this will be now uh, one column here there should be another column here allow me to just copy and paste this for the purpose of illustration so that you can see the, what i mean by the column so i have this right here i've just copied and pasted the letters so this is the, a full page now i want this to be in two columns 
hexagon columns and I say two. You can see now it's been divided into two columns. From uh, uh, when we reach the end here, it goes instead of going to the next page, it goes to the next column. If you want to have three columns, you can do three columns and so on and so forth. This is the column function depending on what you want to do. So let me delete what I had put and continue. We'll leave this as an example for now. References is where you want we use to add the paid references. If you want to add, for instance, an automatic table of content, this is where you add your table of contents. If you want to add uh, end notes or footnotes, if you want to add sightings automatically, everything falls under references. Excuse me. Under mailing is where you want to, let's say, I have this letter and I want to send it to many people. So rather than, or, or with many addresses, I can keep the content and just insert different addresses automatically by just inserting particular addresses on this letter for printing purposes. It makes life a whole lot easier if you're writing, for example, a contract to different companies. So all you want to change is, you want to keep the content, but you want to change maybe the company name and the company uh, address that you're writing to. So you just add all the addresses and just insert them while keeping the contact the same. Under review is where you review the whole document if there were any errors, spellings and grammar, grammar, grammar errors, if there was a word count, and so on and so forth. And view is where you view the entire document. So basically, this is what falls under the ribbon. Now, let's focus more on the home ribbon as it's the most commonly used ribbon that we have. So we have our letter here to Jane. And we're going to use these key attributes to edit our letter and how we want our letter to look like. Starting with the handwriting. If you're comfortable with this handwriting, it's well and good. You can keep it here. But if I'm not comfortable with handwriting, I'll highlight everything by clicking where I want to start from and dragging the cursor all the way to, to the top here. I've highlighted the whole letter. And I go here. This is where we change our handwriting. And when I press this arrow down here, it has brought a variety of handwritings. There are a lot of handwritings you can choose from here. Stored in alphabetical order from A to Z. And as you can see, each handwriting is labeled in the way it looks. For instance, if you look at Times New Roman, this is how it looks. If I don't want Times, I can put maybe Broadway, which, which would be bold. I can put uh, Lucida. I think I like Lucida. <coughs> it looks better. So I've changed my handwriting. <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing maybe I want to change is the color. I don't like this letter to be, to be in black because it's not formal. Jen is maybe my friend and I like to style a little thing. So I can change the color of the words by going here on this color. I can choose it from a variety of colors. Maybe I'll choose uh, green. Green looks good. And now my letter is green. If I want to bold something, I want something to be in bold, maybe hygiene, I want it to stand out. I can bold it here by pressing bold. And you can see hygiene is darker than the other letters. If I want it to be cursive, to be italic, I can click on italic here and everything is in italic. If I want to underline, maybe I want to underline my name is Max. I want to underline this so that it should show that my name is Max. Highlight what you want and click on underline there and you have a line under my name is Max. So there are other things you can do. If this is handwriting is maybe too small and the theogen is not going to read, I can increase the size of the words by highlighting everything again and going here and these are the different sizes we have from 11, 12, and so on and so forth. If you want, you can just insert your own number. Maybe I want size, uh, let's say 20. And this is how 20 is going to look like. If, let's say what you want, for example, let's say I want to use 13. There's no 13 here on our options. Everything is in uh, even numbers. Also, I'll put 13 here. And I have my 13. So you can customize this to how you want it. Another thing you can do is to choose where you want the words to be. Maybe if I want everything to be on the center, I can come here and click center this and everything is going to be centered. If I want it all to be on the right hand side, I'll click here and it will begin from the right or everything will be going towards the right. If I want it justified, I'll click here and all the ends will be in one line as uh, whether left or right. So you can choose whichever style is more applicable to you. Another thing you can do is uh, when increasing the size, the A's here you have, which I've got the up arrow and down arrow, are for increasing the size automatically. So if I want to downsize, 
while we click here once it will be using the next available font if i want to increase the font i can click here that's if i want to view as i'm clicking as i'm doing right now every time i click it goes to the next available font so basically this is how you can uh, change your styling you change your font you change whatever you want if i want to highlight this right now i just put it in bold so that it can be bolded but if i want it to be highlighted i can come here on my highlighter and choose the color that i want to use to highlight maybe pink like this and hygiene is going to be in pink if i want to highlight everything i'll highlight everything and click paper for everything and everything is going to be in pink like that let's try and change maybe the style of the letter so that we can see how styles are going to ap uh, apply so i can change the styling of the letter maybe like this yes and now this letter looks like that as i have chosen there are many other ways you can style your letter if you want to add bullets maybe i want to tell a gen or okay I'm, I'm typing something and i want to add bullets to my uh, document you can come here you can choose if you want the bullets to be numbered lettered numero uh, uh, numero numbers or mixed you can choose come here and choose a variety of ways in which they could be lettered if you want bullets you can choose which bullets you want you want normal bullets you want uh, any fancy shaped bullet it's up to you and if i choose let's say the tick every after paragraph to give me this tick you're seeing right here every after a paragraph let me just remove the highlight so that maybe this can be more seen like that so hygen is ticked there and every time i go to a new paragraph to start with a tick and i can add whatever i want to add on the new paragraph so basically this is how you edit uh, a document and for typing you just use your keyboard and you type whatever you want to type on your keyboard and it will appear there last thing i'm going to show you is inserting tables if you want to insert a table you go on the insert table on here you go on table like i mentioned earlier there are two ways in which you can insert a table you can insert it manually by just hovering over the box as you can see as i hover a box it's a one by one so it's going to display a one by one if i display a one by two it will display a one by two so I hover until I reach a point which uh, I want. So for instance, maybe I want a uh, four by two like this. I'll just highlight four by two boxes and I'll click like that and the table will be inserted. That's one way of inserting the table. And you can also edit the table to how you want the table to look. The other way of inserting a table is by going on table here and you say insert table and you manually enter the number of columns you want. Maybe I want three columns and number of rows you want. I want four rows like that and you say okay so it's given me three columns like that and four rows and you can edit you can type whatever you want in your table you can style your table you can highlight whatever you want in your table and so on and so forth so basically this is a purpose of word and this is how you use words for typing documents and editing documents we end here for today thank you very much we'll be with you tomorrow in the next class have a good evening